The 1970s can often be thought of as the decade that has a little bit of a PR problem. People often immediately think of bad fashion, of flares, of polyester, of cheap manufacture, of a lack of integrity in garments. Now, part of that is true. Part of that is the case. However, throughout the 1970s, there was also an extraordinary luxury market in place that was about a very modern woman and a very modern approach to life. And you can't really have that conversation without talking about the impact of Roy Halston. Now, Halston is often primarily associated with the disco years, with that moment of very, very quite camp, quite high music. But his work for daywear, his designs for daywear, for separates, for American sportswear, were extraordinary. He really defined that decade. Because during the 1970s, you had extraordinary political and social advancements. You had the NAACP really promoting the cause and ensuring that actually racism was dying out far faster than it ever had in the States. You had the election of Harvey Milk and Kathy Kosachenko as Congress people, the first two openly gay people to ever become a part of the American political institution. You had the development of Alice Walker and Maya Angelou as proud black American women writing and saying what they really felt at the time. There was this incredible sense of freedom. There was a huge meeting of different worlds. And Halston understood that. He understood how to relay that idea into fashion for where these people met, for how they responded to each other. And this ensemble behind me, which is a Halston trouser tunic from about 1976, 1977, really shows that up. Yes, it's quite disco cool. Yes, it's definitely for the night time, but it's pure silk crepe. It's entirely set with silver and gold stud work. It's got a degradé sense to the colouring. It's beautifully constructed. And it's also hugely linked back to the 1930s, just as there's always a cyclical approach to fashion. Halston, in the height of the 70s, was really looking back to an art deco sense of glamour. Now, this was probably worn at Studio 54 or its ilk. And that moment is about more than the music. That moment was where Andy Warhol and Bianca Jagger and the former First Lady of the United States of America and Liz Taylor and the whole of the factory crew met, got drunk, partied, danced, slept with each other. It, it was a whole breakdown of social barriers and it was done under the glare of something new. It was done under the glare of the paparazzi. Now, before then, if you saw photographs of your favorite celebrity, it was a stage shot. It was done in a studio. It was some very, very fabricated idea of who they were. That all changed. Suddenly you were seeing photographs of your favorite actor or actress getting off a plane, going into a club, going into a restaurant. It was about them as a person. That also meant that their clothing had to change. Many years later, Tom Ford actually gave an incredible account of his time when he first started as a designer. And one of his early visits when he first moved to New York was to Houston's house. And he said he remembers going into this house, he remembers this spectacularly chic environment, this total lifestyle moment, and meeting Houston. And I think without doubt, that's actually shaped Tom Ford, that has shaped the luxury market that we see right now in the 21st century. But this is the precursor. Houston picked up that idea and really entrenched it within fashion.